What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Splattercat, where we are in the nerdiest of colonies right now. We're getting our little bed chamber set up so that we have low stress and no stress and all that kind of stuff keeps people from puking and peeing and generally making a mess everywhere. In today's episode, we will more than likely, I think, get our bathroom solution set up. Uh, I do think we need to come up with a way to pump water around, and so I think that's going to be a concern today as well, but we still have some tasks that need to get done, and we've got our final duplicate. So let's see what we've got here. We've got Nisbet. Uh, Nisbet appears to be a medic and a researcher. Uh, she's got a really good immune system, which would be pretty cool, but she can't dig. Uh, we've got Marie, who is kind of an all-arounder. However, she's a slow learner, and she's a grease monkey. And then finally, we've got medicine and strength on her, and she's got gastrophobia. I'll probably take Marie on this one, and just to express, it is an option to cancel printing all duplicates if you want. Oh, look, she's getting her Splatoon on. Uh, if you don't do art, you should not do art, because you're going to make crappy art, and then I'm going to be upset with you. See, like, this art right here, plus 22 decor. Look how good this art is. This is the greatest art of all the art, to quote the great Roy. You know, your art is the greatest art of all the art. And so there it is. We've got ourselves a mediocre painting, a mediocre sculpture. An abstract sculpture means that it's really, really bad. It means that it sucks. If it says abstract, it means that, like, eh, Duplicate probably could have done better. He's decided to phone it in on this one. He's over here mucking the stalls for humans, which is pretty gnarly. I don't know if I would take on that job. A hatch has decided to be a little asshole and try to murder us, so we're going to laser it to death until it falls over and dies. He's apparently going to breathe in the middle of a whole bunch of carbon dioxide because that was his brilliant idea of the day. Occasionally your duplicates get these little ideas where they're like, oh, I'm going to start mining a thing and then I'm going to fall asleep in an area that's saturated in carbon dioxide because why not? That obviously won't hurt me. Dude, there's so much carbon dioxide in this corner. What is going on right now? I just want it to go away. Like, I don't want it to be here anymore. I don't even know if these oxygen scrubbers are working. They are not because their filtration medium has not been brought over. That one's working, though, pretty well. Ah, that's why they're not working, because nobody delivered water to them. There we go. So now they should be functioning all right. He's over here making arts. Is it going to be a good arts, or is it going to be a shit arts? It's a shit arts. All right, that's fine. You know, I don't judge people's art. Art is all in the, I guess, beauty of the beholder. This area should keep their stress levels a little bit lower, because it makes them happy when they're around, like, art and stuff like that. So, cool. Should be reasonably decent. Uh, the final thing that I want to do over here is I want it to be some kind of, like, demarcation in between, like, the main shaft over here. And what I'll do is I'll put in a manual airlock right here in case there's a water leak. And then I'll forbid this area if something goes wrong. I don't think anything will, but if you play this game enough, you start to account for the fact that, like, sometimes your duplicates make odd stuff happen that just can't be accounted for. Like, every now and again, something goes wrong. And when that crisis happens, it's always nice to have, like, some level of contingency in place. Uh, oxygen generation is going to be a little bit weird going into the future. We've already used up about 2,000 of our algae, which brings me no joy. That means we're basically working on a limited time schedule right now. And we really should do our best to get... This should filter downwards, by the way. It should come and fall down into here. And I think that's ultimately what's happening, is it's pushing all the carbon dioxide into the corner from the rest of the base, somehow. Uh, with our purifiers down here, there shouldn't be a whole lot of polluted oxygen left, I don't think. Like, it should be all good, so I'm going to deconstruct these so that we aren't wasting the parts and the metal and all that kind of stuff. These down here might be a tad wasteful. I'd like to get both our sanitation situation set up, and also our oxygen generation set up in this episode, but I don't know. I don't have the setup for it right now. So what I might consider is we need to set up a catch-all for the hydrogen. And this is probably where it's all going to go wrong. Uh, because I've never done this before. And so getting this sorted out is going to be fairly major. We're also going through our water pretty quickly, so we'll want to pipe this out sooner rather than later, too. Well, there we go. We'll get that mined out. And then we'll get to the task of putting in a ladder right there. A little bit of copper left, a little bit of algae left, but the majority of it's going to be... 
It's going to be bad. Oh, there's a hatch inside that wall right there. That's pretty cool. We also need to come up with a farming solution, which I haven't done yet. And we need to start generating food that does not give us the raging shits. So if we can get rid of the green apple splatters for a little while, I kind of feel like my colonists will be a lot happier with me. We'll try to do something up here with it, but that's kind of far from the oxygen supply. It might be better just to burrow this way. And so, like, deconstruct this right here. And keep this running in this direction. And we can do all of our farming on this side. I'm not going to play around with irrigation for right now. I'm going to set, I'm going to set irrigation as kind of a long-term goal. Uh, so that we can fiddle around with stuff that way and get everything functioning. We do have a lot of snow and ice down here, which might be useful for keeping ourselves alive. But a lot of it's polluted, so we would need to come up with a purification system right there, too. Cool. I can live with it. I can live with it. I will more than likely have to expand this out, too. A little bit further to the left. Would have planned for it if I had thought about it, but I'm a noob like that. And so I want our sanitation area to be a little bit larger, too, so that I've got a bit more piping to play around with. I just want to play with the pipe, man. It's all that I ever wanted to do. Just play around with the pipe. Oh, good. We trapped a hatch in here. So he's going to sit there and he's going to eat dirt for a little while and turn it into poo. Hopefully he doesn't get too hostile. Some hatches will, like, stay inside your base for, like, weeks and never bother anybody. And then other hatches seem to be very hostile. And I'm not sure what determines whether they get angry or not. I think it has something to do with whether or not you destroy their burrow with your dig tool or something like that. Haven't really figured it out completely yet. Apparently they don't want to dig this over here. But I will make them. You will go and you will dig that spot, or I will murder you. I want this reservoir to be quite a bit bigger, so that I can store my agua in here. So much construction to get done, like there's so many little projects I need to get finished off, because I want my infrastructure to be strong before I start fiddling around with things that could potentially kill me. Looks like they got most of that done. I put in a ladder right there too, so that they could finish off the roof if they needed to. Every now and again when you dig, you find a muck root in the ground. So that's pretty cool because they can just flat out eat that. It's like a self-contained meal. Uh, the muck root has exactly the same amount of kcal as anything else in the game. And so they can eat that straight off the ground. That's one of the reasons why you don't die right in the beginning of the game is because you can find muck root pretty much everywhere. Alright, so that's all done and taken care of right there. They've got the soggy feet debuff. They're going to have to live with that too because I don't care. I'm a cruel, evil taskmaster and I don't care about their misery. I want them to mine out this wall so that I have a little bit more water storage. And in fact, I would keep that going out like so. And like so. Because we're going to drain both of these into here. And so I need this reservoir to be like large and taken care of. It's going to be a little while before the project gets done, but up until it does get done, I need to have it. Over here, how many muck bars do I have? Field rations times six, five mush bars. There's like ten mush bars laying on the ground right now. I could use a few more people to cart stuff around. But eh. I don't want to overstress my colony by creating too many people for whom I have to satisfy needs. How's it doing with the carbon dioxide down here? Not very well. Not very well at all, even with two of those things. It's trying real hard. I do think the carbon dioxide in that corner has gone down slightly. Like, they're trying to mash their way through it, but we're using up too much algae trying to get it. Luckily, I was able to get, like, another thousand kilograms from, like, some of these little mining projects over here. And once I drain this chamber out, I'm going to mine this out further and turn this all into occupiable space that has other things that we can get done. But up until then, it's not going to be a very manageable program. I think at this point, we've mostly got this uh, expanded out enough. The question becomes, do we want to work on the sanitation system first? Or do we want to work on... Here, cancel those jobs out. That's Abyssalite, so that's going to take, like, days to get done. That's not even worth applying, like, Workforce to right now. Uh, we've also got a whole bunch of sand that's fallen in right there, so we'll get rid of that, too. We've got a little bit of space for farming over here. Don't know if it's worth it to fill it out right now. I may or may not. I need them to get this digging job done, though, up here, so that we can start actually doing today's project. Okay, and so the project is ready to go now. Uh, so the first big project is we want to put a water pump down in here. Once we get the water pump down in here, in fact, I'm going to have to replace these on either side with some walls. And that's going to make this a tad more sketchy and leaky. But if we can get this done right here, it'll give us an extra layer of protection for what we're trying to do and also further area that we can run piping through. 
So there we go. I tend to like to keep my piping organized to the walls. Like, I'll keep all inbound pipes on one side, all outbound pipes on the other side, so that if there's a problem with my structure, I can figure it out and be like, what has gone wrong here without too many problems lighting up. And we need his plumbing. So we're going to put a liquid pump in, like, right here. Once the liquid pump is in, uh, green means it's outflow, white means it's inflow. I actually think that they should change this just so it says in and out. The two words are very, very small words, and they're easy to put in. It should just be out that it says on there. It should just say in on this side. Uh, it would make it easier. I mean, it's not hard to understand as it is right now, but uh, I don't think there's any reason that we should make it less easy. You know what I mean? Like, make it as intuitive as possible. And so what I want to see is it's going to run down like so to here. And then we're just going to have a liquid vent right there. And that's just going to drip into our water supply. And so that should be pretty cool stuff. That should be easy to take care of. It looks like it has finally conquered the carbon dioxide down here, which makes me pretty happy. We've got a bit of a carbon dioxide problem up here, and the game is saying that we have like certain things missing. I do need to run wiring up to that as well, so this is going to be something that takes a little bit of time. And indeed, our power structure is already, like, pretty taxed. It's one of those things where I know that my, my power grid is not good right now, and I would like to do better with it. I'll probably set up an extra grid right here, just to make this a little bit easier. So we'll set that up with one battery right there. We'll run an electrical wire in between the two. And we'll tear this down. Actually, we'll use, the, we'll use this to power the other one, too. Once we go up into here, we'll use this one to power our pumps the entire time so we don't have to worry about it quite as much. And with this one, I'm going to set it to only recharge it once it gets down to, like, 10% because the outflow pipe training into here is not, like, an incredibly high priority. It's just, like, one of those long-term projects that I want to be on top of right now. I want to stand on top of its mountain and shout and be like, this is getting done. Everybody's off to bed, so that should help out. Their stress levels are pretty bad at the moment because they've been working in areas where there's a lot of carbon dioxide and they've been having trouble breathing. Uh, May is having the biggest problem with it, it looks like. We'll probably want to set up like an exercise area or something. We'll probably give them some time off after this so that they can get themselves all nice and retooled. Food box is almost full of bad food that gives you diarrhea, so we'll probably want to play with that as well. I have a gas filter right there, and so we'll need to start thinking about... I may actually self-contain this right here and put another block in right there. And then we'll get rid of that so that gas doesn't flow into here. And we'll make this in kind of a dead man zone. And I may actually have this where the hydrogen goes. So we can put in the hydrogen pump right here. That way oxygen can go to the rest of the base. So we'll have an oxygen generator here, like an oxygen generator here. Both of those will have an outflow pipe for the hydrogen that goes over to this side. Although I'd like to keep both contained if I'm going to do that. It's a tough thing to do. But... I don't know. We'll have to plan it. We will have to plan it. It's going to be one of those things where we're like, we'll take it as we go because I don't have like a schematic in my head for how I want to do this new thing yet. And so I'll probably do it poorly the first time. That tends to be how it goes. I tend to refine my designs as I play the game more and more. For now, we'll just put that in right there. And hopefully the gas will be sufficient over here for me to plant some plants. As soon as that electrical wire is done, that pump should be up and running and doing its thing. So there it is. You can see the pump. It kicks on in. You can see the water going through. You should see it come in behind these. That's why I like the pneumatic doors is because I can see through them. Uh, they're not super useful for containing gases and stuff like that, but it's a temporary solution. And so there it goes. You should start to see some drip come out of here in just a moment. And so there it is. Uh, we're draining one water chamber into another water chamber. And whether or not this is going to fill up, I'm not really sure, but I can actually turn this off uh, if I need to. And so we can refill this at the rate that we want to refill it. So that's our first project taken care of right there. Our next project is going to be we want to have another liquid pump right here at the lowest point so that it will constantly be draining. And then what we would prefer to do on this side is actually let's finish this little area like so. And once this little area is fixed, I'm actually going to put in some showers, I'm going to put in some other stuff, and we're going to start with our recycling facilities down here. Uh, the recycling facilities should be good for all the stuff that we want to do. I may also put in another power grid on this side just to handle uh, the recycling facilities. I mean, over here, we don't actually technically have that much connected to these things. 
I'm watching my organic materials at the moment. Why is that even a thing? Why did that happen right there? Go ahead and get rid of those. I don't know why the roof is so low right there, but I don't like it. The roof should not be that low. It needs to go away. The roof needs to be higher. There we go. Give me a higher roof. Whoa. And this should actually make pretty good progress on this down here, as far as I know. Like, we should net be gaining a lot of liquid. I mean, obviously there are projects that need to get done. They've still got a little bit of carbon dioxide down in here. I think that's trickled down from other areas in the base. Though, like, it seems like it migrates right to this, falls in here, and then migrates right. I don't know what causes that airflow pattern to happen, but it makes cleanup convenient, so I'm not going to question it too much. It makes my life simple, so I'm not going to be upset about it. We've got another hatch over here. That's good, because he'll eat resources and make doit. And I'm happy with doit. The doit can't hoit. Uh, I'm going to go with planter boxes up here for right now. You don't want to place them too close to each other because I think they get stifled if you do that. And once we've got those in play, we'll start making food as decayed. Yeah, that's because it's inside of the box. i got to put a refrigerator in over here too. I'll actually probably put the refrigerator right there so that it's already on the grid and makes life easier. Although I don't know if I have. So water purifier is what we're going to need next. A bio distiller would be good, but you're going to need a lot of bio distillers to get the thing done that you want to do. I don't need to set up the piping over here just yet because we don't even have, like, the baseline things in play that I need to have. So I'll go a uh, lavatory right there and a lavatory right there. I like to keep my pipes organized. Once that's done, these both need to be mucked and taken care of, so we'll deal with that in a minute too. How is this chamber draining out? It's actually draining out fairly well. Okay. And then I could put in a second pump up here that will just connect to this pre-existing line. And once we get a little further in, we don't have to worry about, like, fluid pressure or anything like that right now. Everybody knows it sucks ass to live in a house with no water pressure. Uh, over here, we want to do mealwood seeds. We're going to plant that, and then we're going to copy the settings to all of these right here. So that at least that's working. Uh, stress levels are a tiny bit high at the moment. But they should recover over time, so long as we're not sending people into, like, hazardous areas. It should be okay. Yeah, I think that'll keep us functioning for a little while. It looks like we're net losing a little bit of water right here. They will probably grab water from this spot to make their lives easier with the way that the fluid's going. I used to set up little cisterns that were full of water next to my farming areas, but it always backfired and overflowed because I forget to disable something. And so I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. So we're going to run pipes here. So as far as liquid pipes are concerned, we'll go output on this side. This is going to be a tiny bit sketchy. Because we're running out of equitable space due to this pipe being on the right side. So instead, my recommendation would be let's divert to here. And run that down the same way. And then what I'll do is off camera, I'll go through and I'll disable that pipe right there because I would prefer to keep this little junction right here uh, taken care of. It'll make my life a little bit easier. And having an easy life is kind of what I'm going for in this game. Uh, I'm not in the market of making things worse for myself. And as soon as that chamber is done, we'll put another one in right here. It will drain down to the same pipe system. Uh, we've got a skill increase right there. Cooking went up to three. We've got another duplicate here. I'm going to reject all because we have more duplicates than we can handle at the moment. And I don't want them to run out of the things they need in order to survive. As soon as these pipes are done and I see water flowing through it, I will start the arduous task of getting rid of the liquid pipes that are inside these walls right here, which is going to be a pain in the ass because there's really no easy way to do that as far as I know. I've just actually got to manually click every single one and get rid of it. That was bad planning on my part, and I saw it when I was placing things down. I was like, I should run this way, but I didn't want to put in scaffoldings or anything like that at the moment, so it was like, uh, I don't know. Our pipes are made out of sandstone, huh? I can't imagine that that's a great material to build piping that has flow going through it. The erosion on sandstone should actually be fairly rapid. I mean, the majority of it is quartz, and quartz doesn't erode very fast under under moving water, but it does erode over time. It's the last thing to erode out. But there's also other things in there like biotite and little micas and random iron oxides that would... I, I don't trust sandstone piping. I don't trust that for a minute. Alright, so that's done. 
Now what I need to do is I need to see my pipe distribution. And basically, I just need to go through and deconstruct all of these. Just pull them out of the walls. Not an elegant solution, but it's a solution that has to be done. It's one of those things where I, I messed up, and so we've got to reroute something a different direction. There we go. It's still functioning. Like, it's still doing its thing. Oh, water's flowing out. That's not good. Is that water just what was left over in the pipes? Let's go ahead and mop that all up. A uh, little bit of fluid waste right there, but we can use the mop command to get rid of it so that people don't end up with the soggy feet debuff. Uh, anywhere else that there's water, go ahead and take care of it. Even if it's down in like the little carbon dioxide zone, we'll go ahead and mash it on out. For this power grid right here, that's doing its thing. This chamber is actually emptying out pretty well. Uh, it's doing what I expected it to. This guy right here, that's going to need to be taken care of pretty soon too. Organic materials are falling apart, so we're going to want to get this oxygen solution set up ASAP. We want to get that done as soon as possible. I'll get the plumbing run right here, and more than likely in the next episode is when we'll start playing around with the oxygen solution. The way I envision it in my head is we'll have two self-contained areas that are like no-fly zones. You're not allowed to go in there. And the way that it'll work is we'll have a chamber right here, a chamber right here, both of them under sealed airlocks once we get them done. Uh, once the sealed airlock is done, we'll do what we can to purge radicals out of the area, like uh, carbon dioxide. And actually, I don't even think I've done the requisite research just yet. I need performance combustion before this is going to work. Yeah, pressure management might become an issue too. We'll get performance combustion started because we have a lot of good researchers. And then what I'm thinking is we'll have two chambers right here. One of them will be the collect chamber, so the water pipe that goes to the sanitation will go over to here. It'll go to two oxygen generators. The oxygen generators will then produce hydrogen, which will go to the top of the room. Uh, we'll have a suction sieve over here. The suction sieve will pull the entire mass here. And then what we'll do is we'll have a junction in one of the, in probably this room right here. Or to make it easier, I could actually just make it so that there's a membrane right here that only hydrogen can go through, which I think you can do. And then hydrogen will get collected in here. We'll take oxygen from here, and with pipes, we'll pipe it through to everywhere in the base so that oxygen is flowing. And then from there, hydrogen will flow nowhere, actually. The hydrogen will just go to a generator right here, and that generator will pipe electricity back into this grid, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of thinking about the way I want it to go, but for right now, I don't really have anything in the cards. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Oxygen Not Included, where we are eating through our algae a little bit faster than I would like to be. And so I'm hoping as soon as we get this drained out, I'll be able to mine out the rest of this algae, and that'll give us another couple thousand to play around with, which will buy us a little bit more time. Uh, but up until then, I'll see you all next time. Check out the game in the description if you wanted to play it for yourself. Oxygen Not Included, a cool little game by Clay Entertainment, all right? Hi to everybody. I'll see you next time.